Hello everybody, welcome to the next installment of Mud Girl Pottery uh, instructional videos. Um, hope you, you're enjoying them so far. If you are, please feel free to subscribe. This way you get notification for when I put up a new one. And feel free to share it with your friends. Some of them are really interested in clay or some people just like watching this. So um, I'd love all the support you can give me. Today, we are actually gonna trim my sexy pot. So in the last video, if you haven't seen it, go back and look for it. We made this sexy pot. What is a sexy pot? Well, it's a vase or a vase. Since we never know what to call it, we just call it a sexy pot here. It's got some curves, it has a shoulder. I'm not sure how politically correct it is, but you know, that's what we do here in Mud Clay Studio. Um, this is a little drier than I would uh, normally want to trim a pot. It's going to end up shooting off some shreds of clay and dust of clay instead of those nice long sort of chocolatey swirls that we love. So I'm actually just going to dip in a little bit of water. Is that a real fix? Um, no guarantee whatsoever. I sort of enjoy showing you things that can possibly mess up so that you guys know how sensitive the timing is and how much you have to pay attention to your clay to really be successful. And to show you that even though I've been doing this for 20 years, over 20 years, I still mess up as well. So what I want to do is I'm going to be trimming this. And as you can see, it's um, a little wobbly if I was to do it with that. So what we do is we use a chuck. Uh, this is an example of a chuck. It's just a bisque piece of clay. And it's great to have a bunch of different sizes in your studio. Each pot has its own profile and its own sort of design. So we want to make sure that it fits well. This one fits pretty well. Um, it's the sides of it is supporting the shoulders. It's just the right height for me to be able to trim. Uh, it's wide enough for the neck and it's smooth enough to really hold on to this. If I was to try a couple other ones. So this one, the neck fits. Uh, no, that neck one doesn't fit. Bad production action. The neck fits here, but I don't really love how it's sitting in here. It's not really supporting the sides as well as I would like it to. And then we've got this giant one. And honestly, um, you'd say, wow, that's huge, but the shoulders really are this wide and we want it to kind of be housed and, and supported by the chuck. So this one would ideally fit, but I'm not gonna choose it because this shoulder is very sloped. This one has these sort of pointy angles here. This would have been better for something with a really um, sort of sharp shoulder. So I am gonna go back to this one. I'm gonna center that right into the wheel. I'm going to place that right in there. Now what you need for this is a large loop tool, a two-sided smaller loop tool with the round side and the square side, a pin tool and a level. I'm gonna go ahead and get that level. I'll be back in a second. Okay guys, let's get started on trimming this pot. So I've got it in my chuck. And I wanna trim this almost as if I'm trimming a regular pot. So first what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use my, my level. There are levels, um, level apps on your phone. Now the problem is you have to make sure that your wheel is level, but chances are it's not gonna be. So you wanna almost have an idea of how not level your wheel is so that you can do it so that your pot is just equally as not as level. <laughs> okay. We got that bubble sort of in the middle. So we talk about um, when we're centering our clay and an air bubble and I compare it often to a level. If you're, if there's an air bubble in your clay, it's just like that level. That bubble's never gonna go away. So that's about uh, as level as I think I'm gonna get it. Now I'm gonna get my pin tool. I'm gonna use the circles to center it and then I'm gonna, <laughs> that is way off. <laughs> so I'm gonna go ahead and move that over. Draw my circles. Now. Most potters don't do this circle thing. Um, I don't think I've actually never seen another potter do it, but I think it's the easiest way. So basically I draw a circle up on top. I try and get that circle in the middle. 
I'm gonna center my pots to the bottom of my pots, not necessarily the top. No one's gonna look at your pot from the side and notice that foot is to the bottom, but what they all are, all everyone's gonna do is look at the bottom of your pot to look at your price, your signature, whatever reason. And if you make, you make that foot ring centered to the pot and not your bottom, it may be a little off. So no one's looking at it from the side and going, wow, that's a little off. So that's my pro tip of the moment. Now, if you want, you can try to attach this to the chuck. Um, sometimes I soak the chuck first to help it stick a little more. I'm actually just gonna kind of go for it since my pot's a little dry to begin with. I always have my hands sort of pressed down on top. So I'm kind of pushing it onto the wheel to make it kind of stay in place. Notice that I am getting those sort of chocolate shavings instead of those lovely rings of clay that we like. I'm gonna fix my shape. So this was some more of a beginner sort of sexy pot. So I do have quite a bit to trim off to kind of get that nice line. Now, the type of foot that I want, if you go back to one of my videos, I talk about doing what we call the hidden foot. So I don't really want a foot ring here. I want this pot to look like it's sitting on the table, but lifting off at the same time. So I'm gonna go straight. You'll notice that the pot isn't quite round based on the, the wobble, but we can fix that. So we get these lines, and what you're gonna notice in a couple spots that you get these big empty hollow lines. That is actually pieces of grog coming off. So the groggier your clay, oops, we got a little bit of a slip there. So we are gonna try and center again. That could be just, ooh, we are way off. Again, we sort of like when we mess up a little so we can show you what happens if we don't take our time and do things correctly. All right, not so bad. Okay, we're gonna go back at it. Actually, you know what we're gonna do? <laughs> we're gonna go ahead and attach this to the wheel. To the chuck. Just gonna sort of use these pieces. I did wet the clay just a little. Not the part that's sticking to the pot, but the part that's sticking to the chuck. All right, now we're in there, hopefully. Fingers crossed, right? Okay, I think we're actually a little more centered than we actually were to begin with, so that's good. Notice that the, the side of my pot isn't wobbling, but we do want to take our tool off super slow. That slightest move will pull it right out of there. So I'm getting rid of the outside. Pot, I'm kind of just going for that sort of straight line. Again, the big loop tool will take large pieces off although this looks like little shavings but i am working on larger areas than i would be if i was using the small loop tool my hand on top is actually pushing down pretty hard there is some white knuckle going on my my muscle over here is working a little bit more Sort of aiming for this sort of straight edge. So although my pot was a little dry, as I start getting deeper, it's getting a little wetter. A little. So you're gonna wanna be a little more careful with how much pressure you're putting because you're able to put a lot more pressure when it's sort of that white dry color. All right, so now I think I've got sort of that outside line that I like, that profile. Now I wanna go in and I want to get into um, my foot, the inside foot. So I'm gonna choose 
about a half an inch and I'm gonna go right to left. And again, I try to use the corner, especially since this is a little dry, the corner of my tool is gonna dig through that ground. So pro tip with the COVID, we've had to sanitize our tools a lot. We soak them in barbicide at our studio. But what actually is happening is that the glue on our tools is starting to sort of eat away. So when you have a tool that's a little more wobbly, you're gonna to wanna to keep your finger closer to the tool part of it. Um, maybe go back at it, maybe take it apart, add some more E6000. But if you are a studio and you're gonna soak your tools to sanitize them, um, try not to let them sit in there for too long. With barbicide and bleach, bleach is actually eating away at the tools. But with the barbicide, um, 10 minutes is fine, as per my, my eyelash lady. 10 minutes does what it's gotta do. It's the same thing for paint brushes. Also obviously blowing on your pots, not so good during COVID. There's no one else here. And no one would dare come over to my dirty wheel and work. So we're good. All right. So you're gonna notice some people have all of these sort of funky little tools. Um, so these will help you sort of create a shape that you may be interested in. I'm not quite giving it a foot, but I do want it to go in just a little bit. Cause I know that's what the inside of my pot looks like. I know that the inside, also cause that's just how I tend to throw my pots. So as you start to develop sort of a, a method and a style, you know what the inside of your pots look like cause all your insides look alike. I normally don't trim this top part here, um, but I think because when I started off, I was a little off center. Um, I'm gonna allow myself to break my own rule and trim the bottom of my foot a little bit. All right, so I'm not a big fan of trimming all the way down here, but again, because I had to do a little correction from my mistake in the beginning, I went down a little lower. Um, now I've got sort of this straight line that I'm aiming for. Sometimes when I have something a little wonky, I will hide it. I'll hide it by putting in thick carved marks or hashtag carve the shit out of it and just go crazy and carve it, which I might end up doing. I'm not a big fan of smooth surfaces. Um, but at this point, I'm gonna tap it. That's a little higher, so it's a little thinner. Kind of get an idea of how thick it is. And then I'm gonna do what I tell everybody to do is I'm gonna call it a pot. When we call it a pot, it means you're pretty much done. It means you wanna flip it over and kind of get an idea of what your pot looks like and realize that there's really nothing much more you can do because you're never gonna get it back on here centered. Um, so you might as well just call it a pot and if you've made a mistake, you know better for next time. <clears throat> So there we go, that is Sexy Pot. Um, I threw this in our last video, so go ahead and look back to see how we actually made this. And I'm thinking on the Instagram, I'm gonna go ahead and just hashtag carve the shit out of it. So I hope you enjoyed this video on Sexy Pots. And remember, if you love it, please share, subscribe, get notifications, follow me on the TikTok, on the Instagram, on the Facebook, I'm even on the Twitter. Have a great day, guys, and keep on making stuff. Bye.